This how-to video has been developed to help property managers understand how to undertake operational checks of dry risers or wet risers in between the periodic maintenance checks which are completed by your competent contractor. So let's firstly explore the difference between dry and wet risers. Dry risers and wet risers are a system of pipework utilised by the fire brigade to quickly get water in the event of a fire breaking out. The installation of risers removes the need for firefighters to have to drag charged fire hoses all the way up through tall buildings, which could delay firefighting operations or create a hazard during evacuation. Rising mains in buildings can either be filled with water, a wet riser, or left dry, a dry riser. Where mains are supplied from rooftop tanks and pumps in very tall buildings, the mains are referred to as falling mains or sometimes downcomers. Wet risers are permanently charged with water from a pumped source and are installed in buildings up to and above 50 metres, subject to the system being designed to provide adequate flow and pressure at the upper floors. Dry risers are vertical mains fitted into staircase or lift enclosures or other suitable positions. A dry riser system includes an inlet at ground level, on an outside face of the building, and outlets, known as landing valves, fitted in cabinets at each floor level, allowing firefighters to pressurise the main from their appliances. The pipes in dry risers are empty and are only filled with water by firefighters when they arrive. Firefighters will connect the pump outlet in one of their appliances to the dry riser inlet. Water is then drawn from the nearest public fire hydrant, fed by the water supplier's service main, and this is pressurised by the fire pump to provide water at the correct flow and pressure for firefighting operations at the required floor level. Testing and maintenance. The requirements for testing and maintenance of dry and wet risers are contained in British Standard 9090-2015. The British Standard sets out the maintenance and testing to be undertaken by a competent contractor on an annual basis and also the checks that need to be completed by property managers on a six-monthly basis. We will now explain the checks which will need to be undertaken by property managers on a six monthly basis starting with dry risers. Firstly, check the inlet cabinet. Check the locking mechanism externally and internally. In addition, check to ensure the cabinet hinge is in good working order. You will then need to check the valves, spindles, glands and washers to ensure they are present with no obvious signs of disrepair. With regards to the valves, these must move when turned slightly. Now turning to the dry riser outlet cabinets. Check the cabinet door locks and hinges as before. Be aware that you will also need to check any straps and padlocks if present. Remove the blank cap and check the washer. Note that this washer will only be present in the dry riser outlet. Then turn the valve slightly to ensure the equipment is ready to use. Now turning to wet riser testing. The cabinet door locks and hinges need to be checked as previously described. You will then need to check that the valve operates correctly and therefore you will need a bucket. Remove the blank cap and turn the valve very slightly. Some water will escape which will indicate the valve operates correctly and that the system is charged with water. Finally, be aware that the pumps for the wet riser will also need to be tested and there are different testing requirements for electric and diesel pumps. We would advise you to consult with your competent testing contractor in relation to the testing and maintenance of your wet riser pumps. Finally, record keeping. With regards to the required six monthly testing to be undertaken by property managers, it is important to record these in the property fire logbook. 
If you require any further assistance with any of Biosafety Matters, please get in touch. And thanks for watching.